If you're hunting for the ultimate gaming PC, you need to watch this before you buy one. We have reviewed a ton of gaming PCs for you this year, but if there's one video you don't want to miss, this is it. By the end, you're going to know exactly which rig suits your needs and your budget. It's about time you take your gaming to the next level. I'm going to be talking about each one of my favorites individually, starting with the most expensive and somewhat unnecessary option at $5,000, all the way down to the least expensive, budget-friendly, more reasonable options under $1,000. We're also going to reveal what the most purchased pre-built PC this year was. I've collected a massive amount of affiliate link data showing me exactly what the most popular purchases this year have been. The latest deals are constantly changing, so you want to bookmark this video because my top PCs list in the comments and description will be updated every few days as well, along with my links to my recommendations for gaming monitors, mice, and keyboards. We're going to be putting all these top PCs next to each other, comparing their average FPS across a bunch of different games, their benchmarks for content creation, temperatures, fan noise, and most importantly, their price to performance ratios. We've spent a ridiculous amount of testing of these PCs for you this year, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the fruits of our labor in this ultimate pre-built gaming PC comparison. The most expensive option award this year goes to the CLX RAW that I just reviewed. This PC is beautiful and it was spec'd out with some pretty powerful components. With ours, we got the all new AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D CPU and a 4080 GPU assembled in this massive Fantex NV7 case that we chose, which is stacked with 12 fans. Now CLX is a fully custom system integrator, which means that you've got a crazy amount of options for every part that goes into your computer. You can see that it gives you multiple options if you're selecting Selections result in compatibility issues. This level of customizability without building it yourself is only for those with deep pockets though. I spec'd out all these parts individually and you're being charged a $1,400 markup versus going the DIY route. The CLX RAW was a great PC that performed well, but it's the only one on this list that I only recommend for those with deep pockets where money is no object. If you spec'd this PC out with the best CPU in the world right now, the new Ryzen 9 7950X 3D CPU and the best GPU, the 4 4090, you're looking at $5,500 with a custom CLX build. Next up on the list is the Corsair Vengeance i100. The version of this computer that I tested is still sitting around $4,500, but since then the new AMD 3D CPUs have been released, and the slightly faster AMD version, which is called the A8100, is actually the same price, which is surprising because it's actually a more expensive CPU. The i8100, just like the CLX, is another beautiful PC, and it's actually my personal favorite that I've reviewed so far. It just doesn't have the best price to performance ratio as you're about to see later in this video. The design of this case though was really well thought out and it looks incredible. 10 RGB fans total, 6 customizable LED strips accenting the edges of the case and peeking through these sci-fi looking vent holes. Next up on my list is the Corsair Vengeance i7 400. This one used to be my favorite before the i8 100 came out and it's still one that I like a lot. This computer was the most requested review that I've ever had on this channel and it did not disappoint when I finally got to it. I personally like the design, the larger case, and easier upgradability of the i8 100 a little better, but you'll probably have a different opinion if money matters to you after we show you the price to performance ratios. Design-wise, it does feel a little bit more basic, but I've actually seen more and more comments from people that prefer a less sci-fi looking gamer design. For the past two years, Corsair has been ranked at the top on this channel, not only due to their lack of non-proprietary parts like HP, Lenovo, and Alienware, but because they stand by their computers with a two-year warranty versus only one-year warranty from nearly every other computer brand. If you want to save $100 and build this PC yourself, Corsair also sells this DIY build kit that actually comes with a slightly better motherboard. A kit like this is an excellent way to break into the somewhat scary world of DIY because these kits also include their two-year warranty and everything included is guaranteed to be compatible. Now the HP Omen 45L, hands down the best deal of this year so far. For just over $3,000, you can get the HP Omen 45L with an i9 and 4090. It's nearly just as fast as those Corsair Vengeance PCs with the same specs, and you're about to see how incredibly awesome its price to performance ratio is. This one is uniquely designed with something called a cryo chamber that's dedicated to keeping your CPU cool. I'm going to be honest though, kind of a gimmick, because you're about to see that it really didn't have that big of an effect on thermals. OEMs like HP, Lenovo, and Alienware, they tend to use their own versions of NVIDIA GPUs and their own custom motherboards, and then often non 
modular power supplies. Now, if that one is still outside your budget, then this CyberPower PC Gamer Supreme with a 13th gen i7 is what I recommend. This one I haven't done a full review on yet, but I plan to in the very near future. My experience with CyberPower PCs though is pretty positive. Usually one of the most bang for your buck PCs that you can find, but they do tend to run a little hotter than most. So just keep that in mind. I personally don't mind a hotter PC if it's gonna give me a higher performance for my money. Now that SkyTech Azure 2 that I just reviewed for only $2,000, this is an amazing PC. And you're gonna be blown away after you see how this ranks on my price to performance chart. And spoiler alert, this PC actually is faster than last year's best with i9 and 3090s. And last year they were double the price of this one. And if you can swing it, I recommend for $400 more that you get it with the much more powerful 4080 GPU for about a 20% higher performance. Remember, I've got affiliate links for all these PCs in the comments and description below. If you're in the $1,500 range, then I would go with the CyberPower PC Gamer Supreme with a 13th gen i7 and 4060 Ti. Closer to 1,000 and I'd get its little brother, the CyberPower PC Gamer Extreme with a 13th gen i5 and 4060 GPU with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. In all of my gaming tests, most games don't even use that much. And honestly, unless you're a content creator, anything over 32 is a waste of your money. But yeah, this is a great deal for a gaming computer with these specs. This is another one that I plan to be doing a full review here soon as well. At this level though, I do want to warn you to not expect to be able to crank your graphics settings all the way up and play in 4K with a decent frame rate. For under 1000, I recommend the Victus by HP with a new 13th gen i5 and then make sure to select at least a 1660 Super GPU before checkout. This is the bare minimum that I would recommend for decent gaming though. If you're coming from a console like PS5 or the Xbox Series X and you want the graphics to at least match that, then you would at least need a 3060 GPU for $120 more. Yes, that is technically about $300 more than a PS5, but the PS5 is locked and not upgradable. A shorter lifespan than the PC, a smaller library of games that are not nearly as backwards compatible, and games can't be modded on a PS5 like they can on a PC. Customizing your graphics settings is very important for many gamers that want to fine tune their visual experience versus their need for a higher frame rate. All right, enough with the backstory of all these PCs. Let's get into the exciting part. Here's all of them next to each other when it came to the fan noise. Most of them weren't that loud, but you can see at the bottom if you want the quietest, the Celex Raw Lenovo Legion 7i Gen 8 and Corsair Vengeance A7 300 are your best bet. Now, when it came to the thermals, we did a lot of testing inside and out of all these PCs and combined all that data into a master chart. These are our average temperatures across all of the different games we tested for each PC at 1080p gaming. We organized this chart by the CPU because 1080p gaming puts a lot of pressure on the CPU and not so much on the GPU. Here you can see that the 13th gen i5 version of the SkyTech Azure 2 was by far the coolest CPU that we've seen yet. The second is the AMD CPU on the A7 300 and the coolest 13th gen i9 that we've seen belongs to the Lenovo Legion 7i Gen 8. Things changed quite a bit when we stepped it up to 4K gaming though. I organized this chart by the coolest GPU this time because high resolution gaming is very heavy on the GPU. And you can see again that the CLX RAW that we tested had the coolest GPU temperatures out of all of them. The Corsair Vengeance i7-400, SkyTech Azure 2, and both NZXT machines also kept their GPUs surprisingly cool. The top spec 4090 GPU was kept the coolest in the NZXT BLD with all of the similar spec Corsair Vengeance PCs not that far behind. You definitely do not want to run your GPU too hot for too long as that will shorten the lifespan of the most expensive part of your PC. So these pre-builds that kept their 4090s under 60 degrees Celsius average will certainly give you a little more peace of mind. Now for the part that I know you guys are the most curious about, performance. And then right after that, the most important part of this review, the price to performance ratios. The first popular benchmark, PC Mark 10, they self-define themselves as a benchmark that measures complete system performance for modern office needs using tests based on real world applications and activities. My personal favorite, the Corsair Vengeance i8 100 had the best score by far here. For Cinebench R23, which is a great benchmark used to measure 3D rendering capabilities, the top three machines that you'll want to keep in mind are the Skytech Eclipse, Lenovo Legion 7i Gen 8, and of course the Corsair Vengeance i7 400. Another popular rendering software is V-Ray. And with their benchmark system, you can see that again, the Corsair Vengeance i8 100 topped the charts, followed by the Legion 7i Gen 8, Skytech Eclipse, and the Corsair Vengeance i7 400. And for those of you who use Blender, these are the scores that we got with their benchmark. Again, the top spec Corsair Vengeance PCs and the Skytech Eclipse ranked in the top five. Even when stepping down to the i7 480 configurations, the i7 400 was still the best 
performer in that category for 3D rendering. And the last creative benchmarks before we get into gaming that we always have to do are the Pugin benchmarks. For DaVinci Resolve, surprisingly, the top spec i9-4090 version of the Skytech Eclipse did the best, followed by the usual Corsair Vengeance PCs. Similar results for Adobe Premiere as well, except the HP Omen 45L stepped it up to second, performing very well. Photoshop, the usual winners here, but honestly, you don't need a super fast PC for Photoshop. Editing software like DaVinci and Adobe Premiere, you definitely do though. The faster, the better, and the more RAM you have, the better. I recommend at least 32 gigabytes for editing software, but ideally, I suggest 64 or higher for 4K editing. After Effects is another resource-heavy creative app, and for this benchmark, the HP Omen 45L absolutely dominated with a healthy margin. It should definitely be one of your top choices when it comes to motion graphics editing and designing. For 3D Mark, which is a great benchmark used to predict a computer's overall game ability, the custom top spec NZXT BLD machine topped the charts here, followed again by the Corsair Vengeance PCs, and again the lower spec i7-480 version of the NZXT dominated in that category as well. The part of testing that we spent the most amount of time this year though was on actual gaming benchmarks. We averaged the frames per second for six different games at three different resolutions for each PC to give us the best overall perspective on the gaming performance. At 1080p gaming, the very expensive CLX RAW performed quite a bit above the rest. 1080p gaming is more CPU intensive, so it makes sense that the PC with one of the most powerful CPUs, the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D CPU, did the best. At 1440p gaming though, the i8-100 dominated the charts. And not far behind, the Legion, NZXT, and i7-400. And the lower spec i7-480 version of the Corsair Vengeance i7-400 performed the best in that category as well. And then at 4K gaming, the top five PCs were neck and neck with the i7-400 just barely at the top by one average FPS. And then looking down further on the charts, it's such an encouraging and exciting thing to see. It really is a great time to be getting a gaming PC because you can see here that this year's Skytech Azure 2 at only $2,000 actually outperformed last year's best with i9s and 3090 GPUs. Those PCs used to be double that price at $4,000 last year. And this leads me to the most important part of this review, the price to performance ratios. Because of this new updated price, the HP Omen 45L now has the best dollar per FPS ratio out of all the 4090 PCs that I've reviewed so far at 4K. This i9-4090 version of the NZXT had the third lowest dollar per FPS ratio in that category. And the i7-480 version had the second lowest right behind the Corsair Vengeance i7-400 equivalent. Same thing for the price per FPS at 1440p. The Skytech Azure 2 at the top overall and the HP Omen 45L having the best ratio for the top tier i9-4090 PCs. The budget-friendly CyberPower Gamer Extreme took the number one spot when gaming at 1080p resolutions though. So what has everyone been buying after clicking on my links? My combined stats across all affiliate links shows that 40% of you guys ended up going with the Corsair Vengeance i7-400 and 93% of those sales were with the top spec i9-4090 version. That one was my favorite at the beginning of the year, but my personal favorite this year is the i8-100. And only 7% of you guys ended up going with that one. And second place this year so far has gone to the CyberPower PC Gamer Extreme. The third most sold was the Skytech Prism 2, with just a little over 10% of the purchases. I've also done quite a few monitor reviews lately, so make sure to subscribe and check those out. Or if you just want to save some time and take my word for it, my absolute favorite so far was the Corsair Xenion Flex, which is a massive massive 45 inch OLED ultra wide, which you can use flat or bend it with an 800 R curve. That one is $1,500 though. My second favorite, which actually has the best picture was the slightly smaller Alienware AW3423 DWF 34 inch curved OLED gaming monitor at $900. Or with a budget closer to $400, I would go with the Samsung Odyssey G5 ultra wide curved. If you just need something decent to get by, then I would go with the Samsung Odyssey G51C 32 inch inch for only $250. Overall, I'd say my top choice for a budget gaming PC would be that new CyberPower PC Gamer Extreme with a 13th Gen i5 and 4060 GPU. Those are some killer specs for only a little over $1,000. The bare minimum that I'd go is that Victus by HP 15L with a 3060. Mid-range, I'd go with that Skytech Azure 2. That is an insane deal for only $2,000. For the higher end, I recommend the HP Omen 45L. More than the Corsair Vengeance PCs now. And that's mainly because of that major price drop. My personal favorite has been the Corsair Vengeance IA100, if money is no object, but I think most of you are gonna be happier with the Corsair Vengeance i7-400 because it's just a better 
value for your money. Between HP and Corsair though, there's some of you that'll have more of a peace of mind with Corsair's two year warranty, as opposed to the one year warranty from pretty much everybody else. Except for NZXT, NZXT also has a two year warranty. But you are paying quite a bit more for the Corsair Vengeance i7-400, so that's why that's my ultimate recommendation for those of you that want the fastest gaming PC that's the closest gaming PC with an i9 and 4090 to $3,000. Now if you do decide to purchase any of these PCs that I mentioned, then please remember to use my affiliate links in the comments and description below, as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made. And it's actually a major factor in keeping this channel going and getting better and better for you. I'd also like to personally thank all of my members for their monthly support of this channel. I really appreciate you guys. Every little bit helps. Also make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date with all of my latest tech and gaming PCs. Thanks for watching guys. I love you guys. God bless.